Okay, so now we're on to number six in our series, which is about primary research and especially about methodologies for primary research. So what is primary research? Well, we left the previous video at the point at which you had a list of all of your aims and objectives and what you know about them, and also a list of what you don't know about them, which, is, which are your targets, which is your hit list, the stuff you need to find to be able to organize your primary research to be able to find this information. So the first thing you need is to start asking yourself some questions. What information is this? In what form is it? Is it just quantitative uh, figures? How many people buy from us on a Thursday in June? Um, or is it about people's feelings and impressions of something that, you, that you've done? If you want to find out my feelings and impressions, don't ask me to fill in a form. I would much rather talk to you for five or 10 minutes about why and how I feel what I feel. But it's easy enough if you want to find out, did I visit your store on Thursday the 21st? You can ask me that and I can just say no. Um, so you need to start thinking about what is this information? In what form is this information? Is it something that's locked in my brain or is it in uh, somebody's report somewhere on their desk? Is it on the other side of the world? Is it near to hand? Is it accessible? Is it confidential? You may or may not be able to get at that. Who has got it? What do I mean by that? Well, who is your target population? What is the, the, the total sum of people that, that you could write to, talk to, interview, send a questionnaire to? Uh, is it everybody in the country? Is it um, uh, women over 27 uh, in Malouz? Who is it exactly and where are they? So if you start asking the who, what, when, where, and also the why, um, it's a very important question. It's very easy to find out numbers if you add up all the people who answer yes to the question, it might be 73%. But why did 73% say yes? And what happened to the, the other 27%? That figure, the number doesn't mean anything unless you can actually find out why people said what they did and didn't say the other option. So you need to go through the who, what, why, when, where, and then the issue is how. When you take all of that into account, of all the ways of going about getting information, and there are many, you can ring people up and speak to them. You can send them a questionnaire. You can send them a questionnaire as an attachment to an email. You can send them an email with a link to an online questionnaire. You can go out and see people walking out of the shops on a Thursday at 11.30. There's a million and three ways of getting information. But what is the best for you in this circumstance where you need this type of information you need to get to these type of people. Remember, it could be your bosses. It could be everybody from your desk, your immediate superior, his superior, his superior, to the PDG. There are so many different ways of doing this. We don't want you just to say, I did this. We want to know of all of these choices, which is the best? What do I mean by the best? Something that will get you the information you need, such that this information will be reliable and dependable. So if you make recommendations upon it, that the company should spend some money, that you can be sure that these figures and this information is in fact correct. It's easier to get statistics. 
It's easy to get responses, but to be sure that they are reliable, dependable, well, that's something different. So you need to convince us that of all of the ways possible, that the way you thought about doing this, you discounted this one and this one because although they look attractive, in reality, they're not because, and this one is particularly attractive because da -da 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 -da. you need to sell us, to explain to us, to justify to us why what you ultimately went about doing to get this information was the best way the most efficient way of doing it, the quickest, the simplest, the cheapest, etc. The best way of getting the best quality and the most reliable of information. So you don't just start your next chapter, which is about methodology with I did this. You started with, well, I said this was the research gap. When I looked at the research gap for each of my aims and objectives, it became apparent that perhaps I needed to do two different types of research. One might be a research with our clients, which perhaps I could safely do at distance um, with an online questionnaire. And others needed to be with key people within the organization where obviously um, uh, an interview would be more productive and more insightful. It doesn't just mean you have to do one thing, what, cover everything in one survey, you might have to do more than one. But either way, whatever it is that you feel you need to do, you need to explain to us the options before you, why you selected what you did and you ruled out what you did. That might mean explaining constraints. With more time, perhaps I could have done it like this, which potentially would have been even better, but I didn't have that luxury. With access to the company's mailing lists, then I might have been able to do that, but I wasn't permitted to use them. Um, had I been able to, had a budget to travel, um, that would have been great, but I had no budget. And with COVID, well, I couldn't. So I had to do something uh, via an electronic means at distance. So what is the best means of generating the information to fill your research gap, given your constraints? That, my friends, is a methodology. It's not just I did this. It's why I selected that and why that will get me the best results possible. Um, on the course that you will have done, if you're a MICAI student um, in Intro to Research in M1, you will also have had details from me and sites that help you try to identify the best form of research for a certain type of research gap. So do remember to go back to that material and have a look at it. There may be something there that can help you. Okay, so this gets us to the primary research. Well, there comes a point that you've gone out and whether it's in a physical bag or whether it's in a computer database or an Excel farm, whatever it happens to be, or an online questionnaire service, your data is in. At some point you need now to go through the process of, and it's a long process, presenting your data, interpreting and explaining it, analyzing it, evaluating it, drawing conclusions from it, and ultimately making recommendations to your employer on the basis of what you now know. So the next bit of this is the data presentation analysis and evaluation element. It's going to be big. It's potentially the biggest element, the main body of this. Everything has been leading towards finding out all this stuff we don't know. Now, somehow, you have to present it and show it and explain it and analyze and evaluate it. That could be 20 pages or more. 
how are you going to organize it? How are you going to structure it exactly? So that, in fact, is our next video, number seven or eight, on uh, data presentation and analysis. See you back for that one.